Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Marvel Bishop, and you are now listening to and watching the No Way But Up podcast. Uh, I don't even know what day it is. What day is it? That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, we just too busy grinding, man. We yeah, freaking just man. too worried about like <laughs> other stuff other than days. But listen, to the um, I want to shout out the YouTube viewership. I want to shout out the SoundCloud viewership, uh, viewership the Facebook uh, viewership, LinkedIn, Twitter. Thank you so much for every uh, everybody for the support for this podcast. And we have a very, very special, special person slash guest. Um, you definitely seen them on the lab, our first lab that we actually did. Um, one of my guys, uh, and I guess I can definitely say he's becoming like one of my really, really good friends, Mr. Ron Wayne. What's up, man? What is going on, <laughs> man? Yo, do you know how much time that we've tried to be doing this, bro? We have, man. We, we've, been, we've been trying to get this together, man. But uh, thank Everything you. does happen for a reason, though. It does, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so what's up, man? How you been? Everything's great, man. Loving life, man. It's been a it's been a fast start to the year so far, man, and everything's good. Bro, uh, man, I don't even know where to start, honestly. But um, I guess we could just pretty much take it back to when we first met each other, or uh, was when. That was... When I was like during the live days, that's right? the live days, man. Yeah, 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 I used to work at. Well, you actually, you worked at Live before I even worked at Story, right? When did you start Live? I started Live like the end of 2015. Like, okay, October. so you, oh, you were yeah. way after me. Okay, yeah. okay, so I started at Story at 2013. I think one of the times I did meet you was when I used to do private security. You know, on Sundays, basically, you know, right. I used to run into you. Mm. Used to do like the fronts, mm. um, and then I just, uh, you know, we was you was working there. I was doing my thing, and then I realized you just disappeared. <laughs> so, I'm like, so I'm wondering, like, man, from just give me a little bit of a backstory from that time when you left Live, okay, until pretty much to the days of your entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial right, journey, right. and how you got here today. Dope, man. Yeah, so I worked at Live for like two and a half years. It, it was really great, and then, um, you know, it, it was fast money. Yeah. Um, at that time. It was just very like glamorous, you know. I didn't take advantage of like creating meaningful relationships. I was just super amazed at what was going on, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but at that time, I was still trying to, you know, shoot and schedule things and get my photography uh, career going and stuff like that. And um, it was slowly picking up, mm -hmm. and that schedule that I had was just very, you know, the nightlife. You know what the nightlife is like. You know what I mean? So yeah, definitely, it's, it's very taxing on your body mm -hmm. and not just that work was picking up i was calling out and stuff like that and it just got to a point where it was like you know i gotta put all my i just gotta put all my eggs in one basket this photography is what i wanted to do um working these late nights wasn't getting to where i wanted to go you were in like the fitness uh industry too at that time or no was i in the fitness industry i think I think I, I had feel like gave weren't it, you juggling three things at once? Yeah, I was. I think I was still doing some some clients, just uh -huh. a few clients, a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I had already told them what I was doing uh -huh. as far as trying to reach my uh, photography goals, so they knew. So it wasn't like a surprise to them. Mm -hmm. But at this, at, at, when I was working at Live, that was just completely uh, photography focused at that time because I was traveling. You know, like I said, trying to get days off, and and it just got to a boiling point. It was. I remember like it was yesterday. It was just one day where all the actual security, because you know. When you, you have the security staff, yeah. and then you have like the Fountain Blue staff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then the Fountain Blue staff all quit one day. They just- Oh, really? Yeah. They're like, fuck it. Because like, they're only getting paid like 8 $9 an hour. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so the security? The, 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 the regular Okay, the regular shirts, security people. Okay, yeah, that yeah. walk around the lobby. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they all quit cold, cold turkey. Yeah. So then they didn't want to hire anybody. They wanted to use live security yeah. to walk around the lobby. Mm -hmm. So I remember like it was yesterday- they used all the guys, and then finally it was on a rotation. So then it was finally my turn to go, mm -hmm. and you know my pride was like, "Bro, I'm too good to be, you know, walking Dude. around the lobby, man. I need to be inside the club, yeah, getting these connections and stuff." Mm -hmm. And the girl I was dating at that time, I wanted to talk to her and be like, "Hey, listen, you know, I, I felt like I needed somebody to like talk to, but I'm actually happy she didn't pick up the phone. She, I fell asleep, and then I just went to my boss and I'm like, "Hey, look, man, I'm sorry, I can't put in two weeks' notice. Like, work's picked up so much. I got to take care of my family." And then I just, I left. I did, I did talk to him, mm -hmm. but I just, I was like, look, this is it. You know, and I, that was that push that, you know. What, how is the feeling when you first take that jump before it's, you actually make that decision uh, and after? Yeah. Tell like, me like I said, like, it, it was scary. The, to go through the emotions. It, it, it's scary. It's something that I had 
you kind of like play this out, but then now it's happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, true, right, true, like, true, like, true. Like here it is, you know, like everybody says, oh, I'm going to quit my job, this and that. And, but then here it is, you know, and I prayed about it. I was like, I want something to show me a time where I, where I need to like, like man up and like, you know what, this is, this is that opportunity. So, yeah. and I still tried to back out. Cause if like my girl at that time, if she would have said, babe, you're, you're overthinking it. You're going to get a, a good check next week. Da, 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 mm-hmm. That would have been. That's that security, that safety. Bro, it's, it's, it's real crazy how you can just like really just see when just one like little small factor, a little small like, you know what I'm saying, decision making can just like change your whole entire whole life. life. man. It's, no, that's crazy. I remember the time that I actually uh, jumped when it came to story. Um, pretty much, man, I just really, really, I love story. Listen, when it comes to live story, like I'm still in the night live industry, obviously, but me working there really pretty much gave me the tools that I can pretty much use today. Right. You know, like if it wasn't for them, I would not be where I'm at today. You know, like the Dave Grutmans and everybody else. Too. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm forever thankful. But I just knew in my heart that I can definitely do what I need to do on pretty much on my own terms. So, man, this is a... Uh, 2016. I was still living in overtime at the time. Probably had about maybe about three to four thousand dollars in debt, not including my student loans. Okay. <laughs> not including my student loans. Right, right. And I just remember I spoke to my mom. I was with my mom. I was like, yo, like, fuck it. I'm not going back. Mm-hmm. And it's just like when you jump, it's like as soon as you jump, you get mm-hmm. that feeling. It's like, yo, this feels amazing. Right, and then right, you're going right, down right, and right, like, right. oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh, I'm about to fall. Wait, I need my freaking uh, parachute or whatever. And you just pretty much figure it out. So now, so when you made that jump, how did you, um, what did you have to do basically to, you know, prep yourself but there's more as to the, you're going down? There's more to that story because okay. I, okay. still, I still played it safe a okay. little bit. Okay. This is All interesting. Right. This okay. is good. So like I left live, mm-hmm. right? But I had already kind of like, I was looking for another job because like, bro, this is still like, it's not easy, man. Like. It's not, you know no, what I mean? It's so not, It's not for the faint of heart it's either. It's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to leave live, but I'm going to get another job mm-hmm. that's at least going to help me leverage photography. Okay. So then that's when I went to the airport. So then I, I went and I applied Spirit Airlines, which, I mean, if you ever- Hey, follow. you got to do what you got to do. First of all, I would never know because I can't even fit in the fucking place. <laughs> yeah, you can't even. <laughs> yeah. Can't even so fit. I would never even Don't, know how yeah, Spirit yeah. is yeah, because yeah. like, it's like a little ass buck that I heard. So like, I'm not even going to like, but yeah, my bad. Go ahead. Yeah. So I went there. I went to Spirit. They hired me right on the spot. Like they're always, their uh, ratio as far as hiring people is uh-huh. in and out all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that job was like one of the most easiest jobs I had because, you know, I just put bags on the plane and then mm-hmm. you would chill. Like the planes are in the air, you yeah. know? So like True. until the plane comes- you're just chilling. We're like watching Netflix and stuff like that. So um, I leveraged that for like a year and a half, but then, you know, work started picking up again mm-hmm. really tremendously. Mm-hmm. I was able to save a lot of money, like like six months worth of rent. Nice. So, so then it was like, yo, I don't even need this. Like, I don't, I don't mind paying for flights because I can now. Mm-hmm. Photography's going amazing. So then I put in my two weeks there, <laughs> you know? And then that was when... And it's been a year since um, I left that. So being an entrepreneur, like full time, like no Uber, no second job, yeah, nothing. I got it's you. literally been a year. Last February, this nice. past February it was just congrats, like, man. Thanks, man. It, it's it's okay, man. To when you do jump and you do fall flat in your face, to just get up and then try again. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, for me, I was it's one little caveat when it comes to my journey which I feel like is kind of like yours, like the first time that I did, did jump was a failure. Like I actually had to go back to story okay. and re-up basically. Mm-hmm. And then people just need to realize, listen, like your journey and your path is your path. Like right. nothing is perfect. It doesn't have to be carbon copy to like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, yo, know, a lot of people these days, man, they just do freaking worried about like emulating like their artists or, or emulating like you know, their superstars or like pretty much your idols. Like your journey doesn't have to be Gary Vee. Mm-hmm. Your journey doesn't have to be Ty Lopez, Grant right. Cardona. I can go on for days. Right. Your journey is pretty much your journey. So that's one thing, man, that people, you know, saying just need to just uh, really realize. All right, so now we can go back into now the process of pretty much now you're a full-time entrepreneur. Yeah, right? so now so I'm a full-time now, entrepreneur, yeah. money saved, and, uh-huh. and that has, that's, that's going to, you know, raise your confidence a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, like money isn't everything, but it gives you confidence. And you know us as men, 
We're not anything without confidence, Listen, bro. man, like, money isn't anything. It's, it's everything. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to get down to it. Like, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Like, 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 if you want to be for real. So, yeah. boom. Confidence is at a sky high, uh, all-time high. Uh-huh. Work is just improving. I'm getting booked. I mean, like, last year was just the best year of my life. So, nice. like, I'm, you know, um, saving money, getting booked, flying out, doing those things. And, um, and just was just continually to look for new ways to just push myself, man. Mm-hmm. And, um yeah, bro. It, it's you it's definitely incredible. hit the ground running for 2019, man, which I'm really proud of you about. Which um, we actually did talk about with the first episode of the mm-hmm. lab, how you know you're just pretty much just just doing you pretty much you have to do. So I kind of want to get into something where uh, if you want to, okay. is everything's fair game. Yeah, fair game, okay, bro. Good. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember- didn't ask you what we were talking about, so but I like that. Bro. Okay, like, cool. Let's yeah, get man. It. Yeah, I'm let's always, get it. I'm always conversation it, roulette, man. Yeah, let's get it. Um, so. What people need to realize when it comes to being an entrepreneur, like your own business man or woman, is that there are always ups and downs. Mm-hmm. There are always trials and tribulations to right. problems you go through. So, man, walk with me the feelings, the emotions, which I like a lot of people don't even really talk about they don't. when you are not as up as you usually are, when you're not making so that, as that'd much be, money. That would be perfect because like this year, even yeah. before you got here. Mm-hmm. So being an entrepreneur, I write everything down. Right. Nice. So, like, literally everything how, the the revenue, how much money I've made weekly, and year to date, I'm behind already. You know, so yeah, that's fucking with me psychologically. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So, trying to stay up, posting on social media. So, but on the flip side of that, like, I feel like we all need adversity. That's gonna wake you up. Yes. Like today, Instagram went down. <laughs> You know Everybody I mean? going crazy. Everybody's going crazy right yeah. now. You know what I mean? So thinking think, like the life, the, the, the world is over. Bro, the, the other side of your life is, is, is you need those, those, those trials and tribulations mm-hmm. to wake you up and get you to the other side. So like for me, I'm not making as much the first three months as I did last year. So mm-hmm. what am I going to do about it? I'm going to push out more content. I started my podcast. Mind you, last year was so fast. I mean, I feel like you can make time for anything that you want to do, but mm-hmm. last year was like super fast, but being that it slowed down, yeah. I created a podcast. Being that it slowed down, I've already produced more content on my YouTube channel mm-hmm. than I did the whole year of 2018. Do you think we're too worried about making money? I think yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. That we actually- But you know, I do feel like, just like being like us, alpha male, like mm-hmm. I feel like men and women don't think the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got like, you. So that's how we're always going to think. And mm-hmm. it's very rare. I mean, there's some go, no, shout out to the females that actually get up and, you know, they go get it. But like, not, it's not always built like that. It's like, all right, cool. Well, you know, we'll work hard and then you'll meet someone. Mm-hmm. And that's our, I'm a provider anyway. So yeah, exactly. I, I got a, you. You know what I mean? But it's, we're definitely cut from different cloths. You know yeah. I, mean? so, I, 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 um, I'll tell you a, um, and this is not a massage next to the podcast, by the way. <laughs> Let's put that shit out there right now. Um, I really feel, especially being a man, um, you know, we as, and I'm, I'm not a woman, I'm a man, how we really, really need to like, you know, really focus on and see how we can pretty much obviously, you know, provide for ourselves. Because I can definitely get a little personal too. Like these past, you know, three, four months have been, you know, the most, I guess, troubling and like the craziest times of my life where I wasn't really making as much money as I can. And it does mess with you psychologically, like, you know, not just as a man, but just as a person in general, right. you know? And I just feel like I wasn't able to move the way that I want to. I wasn't feel like, you know, if I wanted to take a girl on a date, I wasn't able to do that because right. I wasn't making enough money. Right. So it, it's just um, it's just really, really hard, man. I think one of the ways that I try to combat that and see if you maybe you agree with this is that, you know, like, listen, at the end of the day, like, you really, really have to, like, you know, psych yourself out to let you know, to let yourself know that it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, at the end of the day, like, you, you can have a wife, you can have a mother, a father, whatever you have, like, you know what I'm saying? You are your own biggest cheerleader. And it's like, ain't nobody can fucking do it other than you. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, um, do you believe that the process is lonely? It's very lonely, man. Yeah. And up until like last year, the the end of last year is when I finally met all the creatives. You did the podcast with um, Eric uh-huh. and Rob and Sergio yeah. and them. Those guys opened my eyes. But uh-huh. the first the first half of last year, because it was so fast, I wasn't associating with anybody because yeah. they didn't they didn't understand. You know what I mean? So it's it's definitely lonely. It doesn't stay lonely, but it's more lonely than not lonely Mm -hmm. because you're giving up 
those times, you know, I look forward to Friday, you know, yeah. like, because everybody's out. So mm-hmm. that's the only time where. I remember I, with the other podcast, yeah, you just said I like, have you feel advantage. like Superman. Yeah, I feel like Superman, yeah. bro. I have an Talk advantage. Talk about that. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know what today is, but let's just say if today was Friday, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? I feel like I have an advantage because it, like I said, you know, you don't get credit for going to work Monday through Friday. Mm. You have to. <laughs> like, yeah, you have bills nah, to pay. Definitely, definitely. So then it's like, what are you doing on the weekends? You mm. know what I mean? So then when I met those people close to me that understood that, it was like, wow, you know what I mean? So I got, I got as close, like they say, get as close to the sun as possible. That was the sun for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I, I do feel like the, the journey is lonely, but I feel like I'm now actually having like a different perspective on it. Mm-hmm. I do feel like it's definitely lonely, but like it's only lonely according to people who is not in your journey. Okay. So if you're able to, like friends, I think that's the reason why we mess with each other. Right. I feel like, you know, why we mess with Sergio, Rob, uh, Eric, all these boys, because yeah. we are pretty much on the same lane. Mm-hmm. So just like, you know, if people like math, you, what do you do? You <laughs> go to a person who likes social studies. Mm-hmm. You don't do that shit. You go to a person who likes math. So I think that the, uh, and this actually does tie to a lot of uh, problems that we have mentally in the entrepreneurship. We need to pretty much band together as a unit mm-hmm. to really support each other. For, for sure. And because like, you know, man, like I've definitely, you know, experienced a lot of, uh, you know, mental trauma when it comes to entrepreneurship because like sometimes I'm like, God damn, I don't know where this money's coming from. <laughs> where this money gonna come through? <laughs> you know right, right. No, no, no. For and then sure, when bro. clients for don't sure. play on time, for sure. That, but so you know, what I'm saying? You know so not you to cut you to... off. Go ahead. I, you know, it's like it's a wave, man. When it's uh, going good, just know that it's it's gonna slow down. It mm-hmm. goes up and down. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I look as crazy as it sounds. I look forward to it because it wakes you up, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not posting enough, or I'm not. There's something else that I'm lacking on, or yeah. like, like I said, at least for me, I started. You know the podcast, the YouTube, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, you just gotta take and take that negative and turn it into a positive. You know what I mean? Like, just find out what you haven't been doing and and just start, you know, t- taking different angles on those different things. If you were looking to mirror right now, you'll see a younger younger self. What Say it again. You, if you were if looking, was, if you were looking into the mirror right now, you see a younger self of Ron Ron Wayne. What would you like? What would the conversation be like? Well, the first thing is. Um, don't worry about what other people think. And as much as people have heard that, it's, it's really the determining factor of whether you're doing something you want to do or you're not doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that goes down to whether it's your mom, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Like mm-hmm. Some of the most successful people don't care what anybody thinks. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? They don't care how they look either. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, the lighting's not right. Oh, uh-huh. I didn't get a haircut today. Like, yeah. You put all that shit to the side? Uh-huh. That's, that's definitely about, what I would like, say. You think about the most successful people like, in the world? Like Michael Jordan. Okay. Like, think about him. He don't give a damn if you cackling in his ear. Yeah, yeah, He yeah. don't give a damn if people's cursing at him or what he thinks. Of, like, yo, he, he just does him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, even like in our, our generation. Yeah. Like Michael Jordan's still our generation. But for the millennials. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. I got <laughs> like, you. I got like you. a guy like Shiggy uh-huh. where he was, I was following, bro, I was following Shiggy. Okay. Before, okay. He, before he blew up. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people didn't like him because he- Pre-Kiki? Yeah, pre yeah, yeah pre <laughs> kiki. Okay, he had like one hundred and ninety thousand at this time. Uh-huh. Doing the most spontaneous random stuff. Never had a haircut. Still the same dude. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, and the and the beautiful thing about it is, I wouldn't say it wasn't working, but uh-huh. it wasn't working yet. Mm-hmm. So like, if he decided, oh man, I'm not gonna put out a song with Drake. Like he's the hottest rapper out yeah. right now. Why Why would they look at my stuff? Mm-hmm. He, that's exactly what he did, and that was the. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that literally. Bro, how how big is confidence in this world? It's huge, bro. Like confidence is everything, man. And you know, you have to do whatever it takes to and and, and then that ties into like money again as well, <sighs> because when you have money, you have confidence. Yeah. You know? True. I'm listening to a lot of Grant Cardone. Like mm. and you know, the main focus should be money because that's gonna be able to get you that confidence to feel like you can do anything. Yeah. You know, like I wasn't always like this, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but then when I started making more money, then I got more confident. You yeah, know what I mean? It was the Drake line: um, "People without no money think like money isn't everything." Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, it was like, "Oh, money's not everything." My yeah. ex was like that. Oh, money's not everything. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man. Yeah, like, man. Um, I see you talk about Craig Cardone like a lot. Like, what, what's your what's your inspiration when it comes to him? I feel like. I, 
like, what do you think about him? I, you know, I love people that just get right to the point, and I feel uh-huh. like that's what he does. Um, he doesn't sh- even though he he's a huge salesman, uh-huh. which everything is sales. I just love like just how like he's just rugged, like he's just rugged with it. You I just like how like, like he's just so relentless, relentless with it. Like, like he does not care at all, at all. Yeah, like because I thought about it, I was like, man, you know. For one, the business that I do it for the whole concierge thing, you know, mine is always about like getting new clients, mm-hmm. getting which is pretty much anything, you know right. what I'm saying? And I need to pretty much do what it needs to be done to get these clients. Mm-hmm. So it's like if I just, you know, like for instance, the time that, you know, I was resting on a Monday, I was tired as hell, and you told me, man, get your ass up, boy. <laughs> you know what I'm and, saying? And, and I gotta like, hold, I gotta hold you I gotta hold you accountable. Yes, and that's yeah, and that's that's the that's the beauty, man. Like mm-hmm. If someone's in your circle yeah. and you fuck with them, yeah. like, yo, they posting something, doing something out of line, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. If they're a makeup artist, photographer, hey, what do you think about this? Or whatever, you got to tell them the truth. It's actually, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's actually a really good segue because I was going to get to something else, but I'm glad you brought that up. Um, to you, how important is your circle and how important is for your circle to keep... To, 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 to keep um, to make you accountable mm-hmm. and vice versa. That, this is a really good uh, topic because um, I was going to talk about this on my next podcast, but mm-hmm. I'll just- Sorry, bro. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good, My bad. Bro. It's all good. No, the, the, the circle's literally life or death, really. Mm-hmm. You know, um, If you're working a nine to five, which isn't bad, by the way, um, and your coworkers are Debbie Downers, mm-hmm. then you know, you're going to be a Debbie Downer. Um, if they're- you know, you know what? I think there's something better for me. I think that, like, I, I want to explore, you know, there's something else that's going to have you explore something else. Mm-hmm. Another example, uh, you go to your boy's house. He's always playing NBA 2K, right? Always playing NBA 2K. There's going to be a good chance that you're going to start playing NBA 2K, <laughs> right? True. But if you go to your boy's house, and this is a really good example, and he's doing podcasting. Mm-hmm. And this is all he does, yeah. right? It's a good chance you're going to be doing podcasting. Mm-hmm. And that's, you're the one that... Got me. I don't know. I might have eventually started podcasting, yeah. but, but because you're in my circle, I started it a lot faster. And I was very relentless with you when it came and to you were. Start, and start. I told you to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, look, you're never bothering me. And the, yeah. people, and the people that are close to me, I tell them, like, look, you're never bothering me. Mm-hmm. If it's something that's going to make me better, it's like, yo, Ron, yo, what's up? You said you're going to come by, da, da, da. Like, you know, Eric, like, you know, he, he helps me with Facebook ads. Okay, yo, what's cool. up? When are we going to run this Facebook ad? Like, I tell them straight up, yo, you're never bothering me. You're trying to, we're trying to grow together and make each other better. So... Mm-hmm. Bro, that, that's huge, man. It circles everything, man. Like, whatever you're around becomes you. Like, my mom always told me, it's either one or two things going to happen when you hang around somebody. Mm-hmm. Either you're going to be like them or they're going to be like you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's just what it is. And for me, my life changed because of my circle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, that's, that's the cheat code, man. How, was it difficult? Because obviously, you know, when it comes to people, when it comes to like, having a new circle, you need to get away with the old circle. Mm-hmm. So when you did that... Was that difficult for you? Right. So for me, I didn't really have any like too toxic people in my circle, mm-hmm. but I have some people that they're just happy doing what they're doing. Like mm-hmm. I'm starting to put people in categories. Like, all right, cool. Yeah. This is, you know what I mean? Like, that's. Yeah, they don't necessarily have to be toxic, but they can just right. necessarily not feed to what you are pursuing. Right, right. So, so it's. You know what I'm saying? You, so you it's know what like. I mean? so like I was like, all right, cool. That, that's what you're doing. Uh-huh. I know when to hit you up type thing. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. know if I hit you up, we're only going to be playing video games yeah. or uh-huh. that type of thing. They're not, they're not cut off. It's just a time and a place for mm. them. But I'm trying to get as close to the people on my daily re- routine. Like, you mm. know, like, honestly, I'd be wanting to hit you up more. And I'm like, ah, oh, he's busy. And I feel like I'm that's why people, book, <laughs> and I feel like that's why people don't hit me up too. Uh-huh. But it's like, uh-huh. you know, if you, you can't get something if you don't ask for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like today. Bro, you got one of your freaking, your fucking shirts that says books and booked and busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so how do you think I feel? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, I'm not going to call Ron. Like yeah. this guy's always, he's shooting. So I definitely get it. But like, yeah, you no, know, I got you. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, I forgot what I was saying already. No, go ahead. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Getting that circle mm-hmm. on point, man, is is pretty much, you know, the, definitely the key to uh, to the success and everything. And then also, man, another thing too is uh, we actually did talk about this in the lab, but you know, it, people just need to like really get 
this whole mentality out their head. Listen, you got cut off people, that's cool. But like, hey, listen, like what you did, you didn't necessarily cut them off. You just basically focused on what you need to do. And then this a natural progression, a natural selection of things. You went this way and you went that that way. You guys are pretty much going maybe in the same direction. And then like it's not like you just crash your car into his car and right, right, total. Right, 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 right. You just like, you know what I mean? Just get to the circle, get get to the other lane, and then you just yeah, yeah, drift yeah. it off. Right. So like that's that's just pretty much okay. And then like you know, you don't need, like, nobody, not everybody's on strong, not everybody's a businessman, not everybody's a creative, whatever, so pretty much everything, everybody's different. Um, this is going to be a hard-ass segue, a hard-ass right? right, but um, I wanted to talk about the art of execution. Okay. Like, your philosophy of it, because I really feel like I looked at you um, as a person, especially before this year, this new year, that you were just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you're a Scorpio. You're just like, right, go, right, go, right, go, right, go. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. But I really feel like you have this, like, this double down focus in 2019, you know, and like, you know what I'm saying? You're not fake with it. You're not like one month January 1st. You're like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Execution and focus. And then you just fall off the map. Like, you're just, you're on it now, which I really, really appreciate because it just shows people the type of um, focus and type of energy you need to have in your execution. So, what's your philosophy behind that? So, for me, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, you know, I create my own paycheck. So every day I wake up, you know, if I'm lazy, it's on me. Mm. If I don't post, it's on me. You know what I mean? So that in itself keeps, keeps my drive going. And, and as of late, I've been taking care of my health. Um, and it just all, it all intertwines, man. So like work's been, I'll be real, work's been hella slow. Mm -hmm. But I've been saving my money, so I'm good. But like, I'm happy that it's slow because I've started doing these other things. So mm -hmm. like, I'm like, all right, I got more free time now. So, I'm, you know, I used to be a trainer. I'm going to start taking care of my health now. Mm -hmm. So I've been eating super clean, mm -hmm. diets on point, nice. working nice. out. I got a client. We, we train. We work out together. And now that's helping me optimize my body mm -hmm. better to mm -hmm. execute more. So like, when you really think about it, if you're trying to execute at an optimum level, mm -hmm. there's CEOs and, you know, accounting executives, all these people... They're eating good. Mm -hmm. So if you're not eating good, you're not even competing with these people. Yeah. You're not getting enough rest and stuff like that. So just by me eating healthier has changed a lot. And you know, obviously exercise as well has changed a lot, you know, and that helps me execute, helps me stay focused, um, helps me just really figure out what I need to do. And as far as just just like as far as the art, you know, it's just just doing what you want to do, feeling mm -hmm. complete, feeling, you know, whole and, and and chasing that happiness, you know what I mean? Like just 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 you know, pushing. Do you it know? Do you know how important it is to just make sure, like your inner, like your inner core, is yeah. as safe and like, you know, one of my one of my boys back at home always says, you know, you need to protect your temple mm -hmm. at all times, and um, it's crazy. I think Ty Lopez actually said that is that you know, at the end of the day, you know, what you really, really have is your health. Yeah, it's true. Like. That's the only thing you really, really have. Like, right. fuck everything else. You know what I'm saying? The money and everything else, too. You, you kind of have it, but you really don't because when you die, guess what? Because of your health, you ain't got no more. You know? So I think that's actually a really good topic, too, that a lot of people think that they have to sacrifice, which I'm not saying you do have to sacrifice when you do we need to do what you love, but I am not really an advocator of sacrificing your health in order to get that. In order to get, in order to get what you need to do, like like your dreams, basically. Like I'm talking about eating bad and and stuff like that. I really feel like for you to basically, you know, to accelerate that, like you have to pretty much eat well. You for have sure. to take care, take, for sure. take care of yourself. For sure. Like once things are, uh, for me personally, everything was aligned uh -huh. except for the health. Yes. So I'm like, well, it can't hurt me if I eat mm -hmm. better. It's only going to help me. I might be able to. Create more ideas by mm -hmm. eating healthier because my brain's, you know, performing better and stuff like that. So, bro, it def it definitely plays into it. And I'm surrounded by these people. Yeah. And I'm seeing, I mean, e even besides like the successful part of uh -huh. being healthy, uh -huh. it feels good. Yeah, true. Right? Who doesn't want to feel good? I mean, listen, that, <laughs> bro, like, <laughs> I think, like, that's what I was going to tell you. I think like Ty Lopez, like, right. I think he had like a saying where he was like, hey, like if you had a choice, what would you do? Would you be a person who is really, really healthy and that's pretty much like not broke, but I guess like, you know, that's pretty much good? Or would you want to be a fat ass, obese billionaire? 
And when you where you can't because he he made he made a choice he made okay. as many example oh, okay. Okay. where like he actually knew a person who was a billionaire worth like fifty billion dollars. He's over five hundred pounds and he can only he can only be in the bed. Right, exactly. Yeah, bro, it, it's huge, man, and that's why I'm literally going to be starting my journey as far as just taking care of my health, man, and documenting that too as mm-hmm. well. So you guys stay tuned for that. Yeah, no, it's, it's <laughs> listen, it's it's everything at the end of the day, man. It, it really is full circle. Um, you know. Not only with health when it comes to uh, your your body, but also your mind too. When you're an entrepreneur, because you are a lot of people don't know this, a lot of people don't realize this. You are generating or maybe even pulling so much goddamn energy from your body, your right. mind, your yeah. spirit. Yeah. That like it's it's wild, man. <laughs> it, it <laughs> like, just, it's it's literally full circle. And then now uh-huh. it's like, guess what? I'm not gonna date somebody that's not eating good. Yeah, <laughs> like, true, true. You went to me, bro. I don't go to. I don't eat fast food, bro. <laughs> that shit literally is like a it's like it's a little bit of a turn off, right? Yeah, yeah. If you're I got gonna you. Go get a, a burger. Get it like go to a restaurant. Get yeah, like a real I got burger. You. you know what I'm saying? Like, I got yeah. you. Like, bro, it's like it's that's it's crazy. Whole other man. Topic in itself. Hey, but mean? listen, man. We you kind of brought it up though. Man, entrepreneurship and, and dating life. <laughs> Ooh, boy. You know, dr- driving over here, I was like, I just hope he. We're not talking about relationships. <laughs> And I didn't want to. I didn't want to. It's only gonna be a little service, man, because we already got a little more time left. But. All right, cool. Yeah, but, we're running um, out of time, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And next time, <laughs> next time on the show. But um, you know, it's funny. Uh, for me, dating and the entrepreneur life, and what pretty much you know, the freelancer, or wherever you are, it, it's 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 really really difficult, especially when you're on that climb. Right. You know what I'm saying because. You really have to have somebody that is willing to pretty much go up with you and go down with you too. Correct. That is very like people don't yeah, even think about that. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that whole process and the, the just the uh, um, influctuating like you know process basically. Like you really have to have somebody to really really hold you down. And honestly, I will tell you the truth, and maybe I need to look at it from the other side. Is like. Maybe it is very, very hard. Maybe maybe it is not that easy or whatever to go with somebody. Because mm-hmm. you can think about it, you know, say, oh, man, he's very, very ambitious. He's very, very great. Like, I really love what he does. He's this and that. But, like, damn, like, sometimes, like, he makes 30 grand a year, 30 grand a month, and sometimes he makes five. So, <laughs> so, 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 so right, it's like, right. so when like, you're yeah, in right, that process, right, basically, right. to really solidify yourself and to be secure, is dating someone the smart thing to do? It is if you guys are on the same page, like yeah. you said. Um, for example, I'm getting myself into fitness and stuff like that. I have that background. I do photography as well. So ideally, I would want someone that you don't have to be a photographer. You don't even have to be a model or a makeup artist, uh-huh. right? But then now, you know, you like taking care of your health. You know what I mean? Boom. That's a turn on. You like to eat healthy and stuff like that. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's still tough because, you know, I'm making a lot more money now. So then it's like, you know, obviously you want someone that makes some money too, mm-hmm. you know? So then it's like, all right, cool. But, but you know, it's funny because now I look at it like, you know, maybe I'll just get a significant other that has benefits because I'm going to need that. Benefits uh-huh. are real nice. Yeah. No, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So she's happy, you know, she's making 40, 50, you know what I mean? Because I'm a provider anyway. So it's like, I'm going to help, I'm going to help you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. not going to give you money. I'm going to teach you how yeah, to make money. Definitely. And we're going to make money together. And we're going to make money together. So yeah, covenant. You know what I mean? Covenant for sure, man. So. Um, but yeah, in the beginning stages, just, just making sure you guys are on the same page, man, just growing together, like in whatever field you're in is, is, is very important. You know what I mean? Getting those common, the commonalities together, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, oh my gosh, like I always want to do this. You want to do that too. You know what I mean? Having stuff in common. Yeah. And I think what, what really is, uh, especially for, um, the type of people that we are, it's not necessarily you have to be an entrepreneur, but you have to have some type of ambitious nature. Like, even if you do have a job, the nine to five or 40, 40 hours a right. week, and you're making 40, 50K, right. like, what else are you doing basically to, you know, know it up? Like, what, what right. are you doing basically to elevate not you, not only you as a woman, but also us as well as a covenant, basically? Right. Um, but um, one thing I will say, man, at the end of the day, and I really realize this, is that, you know, even though the journey can be lonely, there is nothing in the world that can be as great as having a strong woman strong by your side. Woman. Three thousand percent on that one, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> and that's that's the one thing, man, that like, you know, I really wish um, you know, hopefully, you know, I could definitely be blessed with. Um 
bro, man, this this is it's crazy. I know like we kind of went a little bit all over the place, but I feel like everything kind of like intertwined yeah, a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 this yeah, is definitely. crazy, man. Bro, what's what's um what's next for you, man? Like what what in the next uh, we're heading into the second quarter okay. of 2019, I believe, right? Or are we still in the, are we in the second quarter? I still think I, we're still in the first. Yeah, we're still in the yeah, first. We're still in the first. So what March. so what is going to be like your 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 next Next thing that you're going to pretty much conquer in, in the, the second quarter of 2019, what's next for Ronald Rain? I mean, what's next for me, I'm still going to be doing photography, mm-hmm. um, you know, branching out, um, doing my apparel, apparel brands and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But um, just um, channeling how I feel with this, this uh, personal training and taking care mm-hmm. of my health, man, mm-hmm. it just feels so good. Just, I'm not going to be selling meal plans or anything like that, mm-hmm. but just the journey of it and being able to go back and be like, hey, look. You know, I've reached a certain point in photography, mm-hmm. and then now I want to take it to that next level. It was I felt like something was missing, so I'm mm-hmm. really excited to start showing people. And you never know, like maybe once you do that, you know, you can be, you know, that guy that pretty much can have the connector between fitness and entrepreneurship, and pretty much merge them together. Because yeah. I feel like a lot of people think that you know you can only do one than one, mm-hmm. but like that's not really the case. Right. You just need to just you know like for instance not only just self awareness but also like auditing yourself, which is another topic right there, yeah. <laughs> which we yeah. can't really get into. Right, but right. it's always about just auditing and monetizing your time, and you can pretty much do whatever you want. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. You're Ronald, man. I appreciate you, man. Course, thank you so man. much. Always, it was, thank God we finally did this, man. But listen, <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, where can we find you? You guys can find me on Instagram. Twitter, YouTube at Ronald Wayne, and uh, that's an underscore at the end of it. Yeah. Ronald Wayne, I appreciate you, man, for coming by, man. This will not be the last time you'll be on this uh, podcast. And um, as always, there's only one way.